Hi everybody and welcome back to the kitchen. One of my many, many, many fans recently wrote to me and suggested that I stop reviewing audio technology, which I obviously know nothing about, and get back in the kitchen where I belong. Well, I couldn't agree more. And today I have a number of products to demonstrate and review for you. And we're going to make a pasta dish that is inspired by a lunch that I, my wife and I recently went to at a local winery. It seems so simple, but it was delicious. And I thought, oh, I could do that. We're going to give it a try. We'll see what happens. So stick around. We're going to have some fun. This is a 14 piece nonstick die cast aluminum cookware set. Now, a lot of these pieces are admittedly these pan protectors, but I don't mind that. I am very picky about my pans being scratched. I don't want them scratched and I definitely don't want them scratched in storage. So you just put these in between your pans and then you can stack them worry free. I like that. You also get these <laughs> non scratch utensils, spatula and a ladle. And I like that. I mean, you might think, well, I already have something like this, but maybe you don't, or maybe you don't, maybe you only have metal utensils and you don't want to get a cookware set where you don't want to use metal and then not have anything. This is ready to cook as soon as you open the box. They also include lids. We've got a large lid that will cover this, a medium sized lid that will cover this or this and a small lid. These all have stay cool Bakelite handles and the pots themselves also have uh, the stay cool handles. So I really like that. I don't know if you've ever, and I don't even know if this is universally true, but these handles are so smooth. Uh, I just, they feel good in your hand. I, I really like uh, the way they look, the way they feel. This is an attractive set. We are going to put it to a test today, cooking something that we're going to see if we can break these things. I mean, not, I'm not going to abuse them, but I'm going to use them and hopefully they'll stick. Uh, hopefully, well, hopefully they won't stick. <laughs> hopefully they'll last and we'll uh, have a good time in the kitchen because that's what it's all about. This is the New Wave Pick Flex. It's a portable induction cooktop. It has a six and a half inch coil on the top and 45 precise temperature settings. And they throw in a nine inch nonstick fry pan just to make sure you have everything you need to get started. We're going to test this today and hopefully have a good time. We are testing this paper towel holder. You might say to yourself, what's so special about a paper towel holder? Well, it's a wooden paper towel holder. Wood is always nice in the kitchen, natural materials. But then you have this nice sea turtle resin accent. And they suggest that it would be good for a beach house or ocean decor. None of which is true here, but we do like sea turtles. And so why not? I am testing these 28 ounce ceramic soup bowls. They come with these silicone lids that they say are leak proof, although they do caution you not to invert the bowl while the lid is on. One thing that I think is special about these is that they are dishwasher safe, microwave safe, and oven safe up to 480 degrees. Uh, I hope that's true because we're going to use them in the oven today and uh, see what happens. <laughs> but I don't want to ruin dinner, so I hope it works. I don't always shoot with multiple cameras, but today I'm going to, and I'll be using this carbon fiber tripod from Niwer. This is the TP09, and they mean serious business with this thing. It comes with a camera holder with a cold shoe and it has a standard quarter inch adapter. So you can use this with your DSLR, your action camera, your video camera, whatever you have, it's going to, more than likely, it's going to have a quarter inch screw hole in it. It has a maximum load of 11 pounds and it's adjustable in height and angle. I, I'm very excited to use this today and we'll see what happens. I didn't have any knives or cutting boards to test today, so I just did all my prep work ahead of time. I am going to be using 100 ounces of Italian peeled tomatoes. So this is going to be making a lot of sauce. I'm going to have to crush these tomatoes myself. And 
Also, I'm going to be using, there really is no recipe. Uh, this is just stuff that sounded good to me today. First of all, I have some uh, uh, Thai peppers, or bird's eye chilies, I should say. These are locally grown. Thank you, Rob. And some green bell pepper, shallots, garlic. That's nine cloves of garlic there. It should be very tasty. Some of this Pompeii balsamic vinegar. We'll see about that. I've got some Johnsonville hot Italian sausage and some oregano, salt, pepper, sugar. Um, that's, that's about it, I think. And uh, I've, I didn't have any olive oil in the house, so I'm using avocado oil. And I'll be using some bacon fat, too, because uh, bacon makes everything better. Oh, and uh, I've got some fresh basil here that I'll be throwing in there. So it should be a good sauce. And so we'll start by crushing the tomatoes. All right, I'm going to try to not to make a mess here. Ooh, it's already not working. Ooh, boy, this is a lot. Wow. I don't know if this is going to fit in my pan. Oh, all right. Well, it looks like there's some... Hopefully that's basil and not... Uh, uh, I don't even want to speculate. <laughs> You have to get your hand, if you're, if you're going to be doing this, you got to get your hand beneath the surface because these things tend to spray. And the, my goal is not to make this super smooth. It is, I want some chunks. I just don't want whole tomatoes, you know. This is, <laughs> this is, this is so much sauce. I'm going to have to use the big pot. I was going to use that for pasta water, but I, don't, I think I, I need it for this. I'm going to make sure I get all the stems out. And I think some of these will just cook down too, so it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, I think this part's done. I'm going to be using the New Wave Pick Flex induction cooktop and the biggest pan in the GT cooking set. Hopefully, I have my doubts. I don't know if all that's going to fit in here, but we will do our best. Um, and... I am going to set this on a medium high heat to cook down my aromatics and then we'll take it from there. So put this on medium high. This, this GT cookware is supposed to be induction safe or induction compatible. Um, it says you can basically use it anywhere except in the oven. So we will try it. I put it on medium-high. It's reading 375 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to use a combination of bacon fat and the avocado oil. I'm going to guess, it looks like about a half cup of bacon fat and a quarter cup of avocado oil, maybe. There, quarter cup. One thing I'm curious is on the New Wave Pick Flex induction cooktop, it has a six and a half inch coil. The pan is larger than six and a half inch. Now they say that the coil will heat evenly across the coil, but of course there is going to be a part that's unheated because the pan is larger. So I, we'll see what, how that affects anything. I don't think it's going to hurt anything, but I'm just noting it because that's what we're doing here. We're testing stuff. Oh, start. I forgot to hit start. That helps, huh? 
All right, it's going. <laughs> it turns out when you hit start, things uh, start to melt much quicker. I'm going to use the spatula that came with the set to do my stirring and such and not damage the surface of the cookware. Well, one thing that they said is to uh, make sure that you wash all the cookware before you use it, which is, is always a good idea. But they also said to put some oil in the cookware before each use and heat it up, I guess to season it, I don't know. But I figured I, wasn't, I wouldn't need to do that because I'm using oil anyway as, as part of the recipe. So I'm skipping that step kind of, but not really. And to be honest, when, even when using nonstick cookware, I usually use some kind of a oil. Maybe not as much. All right, the bacon fat is melted. First, I'm going to be putting the shallots in. I have a lot of shallots, but I'm making a lot of sauce. One of the reasons why I wanted to make a tomato sauce or a red sauce is because I figured it might damage the surface of the pot. Of the, uh, pot. And I wanted to test that, so that's what we're doing. And I'm going to put in the garlic. I heard that the moisture in the onion will protect the garlic from burning. So we'll see about that. I hope so. And I'm going to put in my bird's eye chilies. I was just going to use crushed red pepper, but then I remembered I had these. I said, well, let's use these. I think that is four, and they're, they're pretty large. My wife is not a big pa pasta fan, and she doesn't like cheese. And so she won't like this. And so <laughs> I figure, and my daughter doesn't like spicy things and she doesn't eat pasta. And so uh, basically, I'm, tonight I'm cooking just for me, which is fine. Sometimes you have to do that. But with that in mind, I'm going to make it spicy because I like it spicy. I'd like to get a little more color on the shallots. I notice that. There was uh, like a brown buildup on the side of the pot, but it rubs right off. So I, I don't think that's going to cause any problems later with cleanup. I think I'll go ahead and put in the bell pepper. I don't necessarily need this to be um, browned. I just like the flavor of bell pepper in a red sauce. I don't know if that's a common opinion, but I think it makes the dish. I did forget one thing. I was going to add tomato paste to my sauce just to give it some, to brighten it up a bit. Uh, I'm gonna get some. I just want to let this cook down a little more. It's, I don't think I'm going to lose all of my liquid because a lot of it should be bacon fat and oil. So I don't think that's going to evaporate anytime soon. But the shallots have a lot of water. The green pepper has a lot of water. But it, 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 it actually does look like it's drying out. So. I think we'll be just about ready to put in the tomato. The pan is kind of slipping on top of the induction cooktop. 
So I, I'm holding on to it so it doesn't fly off. I'm going to throw in some oregano. A nice heaping tablespoon. It's a lot of sauce. I, I might even add more later. We'll see. And was there something else I was going to add to it? It's probably some salt. Salt and pepper. So, a tablespoon of kosher salt. Okay, I see the color that I like. I'm going to turn it down to low. And add my sugar. That's three tablespoons of sugar. And a quarter cup of my balsamic, such as it is. Look at that color. It smells like vinegar. And some pepper, probably about medium coarseness And I think I'm going to ladle in this tomato sauce. I just don't trust pouring it in there. I'm going to use the ladle that came with the cookware to see if this stains. Oh, I don't know if these are in frame yet, but I made these sourdough baguettes this morning to go with the pasta. Although it's after 8 o'clock right now, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to have pasta tonight. But we'll see. The bread will still be good tomorrow if I do that. I don't think I'm going to be using all of this sauce today, but tomato sauce freezes well. And I also like to make homemade pizzas and um, I like pasta, so I'm not too worried. It'll get used. Well, I didn't think this would all fit, but it looks like it will. I was going to cook this for about 30 minutes, but there's so much of it, I might give it more time than that. It's good. It's not warm yet, obviously, but it is tasty. Yeah, I don't think it needs anything else. I was thinking about adding more salt to it, but it doesn't need it. So just got, we're just going to cook this down for 30 minutes and then move on to the next step. Everything else is going to be easy. I just need to boil the pasta. I need to fry up the, the uh, Italian sausage, um, shred my cheese, and then just assemble it and bake it. So it, this part uh, should be easy. Be right back.
Looks like I have a reason to test out my paper towel holder. Didn't even notice this. I've got water boiling for the pasta while the sauce cooks and now I'm going to fry up my uh, hot Italian sausage. I have water boiling for the pasta and while I'm waiting for the sauce to cook I've got water boiling for the pasta and now I'm going to cook the hot Italian sausage just to get ready for the next step. Oh, I forgot about the basil. I'm just putting whole leaves in their stem and all. At the end, I will dig them out. They will give their flavor, but uh, not, I won't have basil chunks floating around. That is so good. Mm. I could just eat the sauce. It's so good. That bread dipped in the sauce. Mm. Now the the Italian sausage has a lot of fat in it already. I didn't add any more to season the pan. I don't think that's going to be any trouble at all. It's, everything is just sliding around. After I'm done cooking the sausage, I'll probably add the fat to the sauce. Get a few more minutes on the sausage. I still see some pink. Mm. So good. It's not really getting that warm though. I think I might turn up the heat just a little bit medium low I don't want it to start bubbling over everything but I do I would like it to be warm through before I use it sausage is about done I don't want it to dry out so I think I'm going to call it done. 
looks good. I'm going to go ahead and add the sausage fat to the sauce. I had to assemble these pots and this is actually a skillet, but um, the handle feels a little loose to me, so I'm going to tighten it up and see if that helps. Starting to warm up. I thought the sauce would be spicier. It really isn't. I almost wonder if I should add some red pepper flakes. No, if I'm going to leave it alone. It is so it's so delicious. I'm I can always add red pepper flakes to the final product. The water is boiling. I will go ahead and add the pasta. I wouldn't normally use this pot for boiling pasta, but uh, <laughs> I needed the big one for the sauce. Set the timer for 11 minutes. I should also note that after I emptied the sausage from the pan, I put it right back on the hot burner and let it sizzle. So <laughs> whatever is remaining in the pot is perhaps adhering to the pan. Well, it'll make cleanup more interesting. Oh, I've got some bubbles going on here. So that is, I don't want vigorous bubbles, but I, I want some action. So I like that. Yep, it's getting warmer. I like it. I should warm up the oven while all this is happening. quality control. Mm, mm. So good. So happy. I'm stirring this to avoid anything from sticking to the bottom, but I have not detected that at all. And I don't know if that's because of the pot, but it probably is. 
normally when you cook, uh, it's not unusual for tomato sauce to stick to the bottom of the pan if you don't stir it quite often. But I'm not detecting that here. And I wasn't sure if I needed a spatula like this, but I really like it for, for stirring. I have a metal one similar to this um, that you use for woks, but obviously I can't use it in the nonstick pan. So this, this is nice. I, uh, I'm enjoying this. I think the sauce is probably done, but I'm just going to let it go a little bit more. It doesn't need to reduce. And it's not super thick, but it's so good. The timer says the pasta is done, but I'm going to try it anyway. It's good. Al dente. Oh, I can start to feel the sauce sticking to the bottom. Good thing I stirred. It does seem to be thickening. I was going to shred some mozzarella because I forgot to get provolone, but I found these slices of provolone in the refrigerator. So I think I'm going to go with my original idea and use the sliced provolone. I may regret it, but probably not. The induction cooktop just shut itself off. I don't know if there is a time limit on this. It has been going, I don't know how long it's been going. But that's interesting. It might be, it might not be broken. It might be, maybe that's what it's supposed to do. I didn't actually read the book. I might have to read the book. But it, it, I was able to restart it, so I think it's okay. I put the pasta back into the container where I was crushing the tomatoes, and it's, it's kind of <laughs> stuck together a little bit. I'm going to put some of the sauce into this container just to break up the pasta. And plus, I want to sauce it anyway. Making a little bit of a mess, I think. I did not pick out the basil yet, so I'm having to hunt around. Maybe I should pick out the basil. Well, let me finish this first. I want to break up my pasta before it gels together. Okay, my pasta has been separated. So now I will remove the basil. Try not to be too messy, but I don't think that's possible. It's kind of a drippy process. I should have counted the stems before I put them in. I might have gotten them all. Oh, 
All right. It's going to sauce the pasta a little more. I like a saucy pasta. But this, the sauce really, I'm trying to recreate the dish from the winery and that wasn't just drowning in sauce. So I'm not going to drown this in sauce either. I will add the sausage. I'm going to relocate the sauce because I think I'm done with that. I like how the induction cooktop immediately shut off when I remove the pan. That's a nice feature. Now they say that this surface may still be hot, so I'm not going to touch it, but I do want it out of the way. Clean this up a little bit with my handy paper towels. I'm very excited about this. I don't know if this looks good to you, but I, <laughs> it looks delicious to me. I think what I will do is layer the pasta, sausage, and sauce in these Latauchi ceramic soup bowls and just put a, a slice of cheese. This is thin provolone, so I think that'll just make a nice mix. And when it bakes, it'll just get all gooey and fabulous. So I think that is going to be amazing. These are 28 ounce bowls, which I think that'll be a hearty portion. And these slices of provolone are perfect. <laughs> for the to fit in here it's here I'll show you another layer of pasta and sausage and sauce Another slice of cheese and then one more layer will do it. In fact, it's, it'll be overflowing at that point. I don't know if I'll be able to get the lid back on. Yeah, I probably will. Well, maybe not now. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see. It'll cook down, right? No, it won't. And then one final slice of provolone. To add a flare, you might put a basil leaf or two on top before serving, but I don't know if we're going to get that fancy here. In fact, especially since it's just for me. Mm. Okay. Dish number two. I'm so, I don't know if you can tell, but I am very excited for this. I, it looks amazing. It smells amazing. Um, I know the components are good. I, I, this cannot miss. I don't know if it will be as good as the one at the winery, but I suspect it will be. Or 
a worthy competitor anyway. I need more of these soup bowls. I, I don't need less pasta. I need more bowls. All right. I need to bake these. I, I need to figure out something to do with this, too. So let me work on that, and I'll be right back. I do have a couple of these comparatively miniature ramekins I could use. It's still not going to hold the rest of this, but it'll get me farther along. It might hold the rest. Perfect. I'm going to add another slice of cheese to these. Might as well use up the pack, right? I'm going to stick this in the oven, melt the cheese, maybe brown it a little bit, and it's going to be ready to eat, which it's after 9 p.m. I think that's even late for Europe. Check out my sourdough loaves while we're waiting. These, I've been playing with sourdough now for, uh, I don't know, 13 or 14 months. Probably, yeah, something like that. And I've been using the same starter that I originally created 14 months ago and it's it's thriving it's the way i kill plants i had no idea that i'd be able to keep a sourdough starter alive this long but it's been easy and i don't know if it's because of this environment i keep it on the dishwasher so it has a constant well not constant but daily dose of heat uh, which i I think is more important in the winter. Uh, we live in Minnesota and it doesn't always stay warm in this house. <laughs> so uh, the starter did fine in the winter. It's doing fine in the summer. It, it's really quite impressive to watch it grow. And then, you know, when we go on vacation or whatever, I stick it in the refrigerator. It's just fine. So that's my story. That's my sourdough story. The bread, I think it looks really good. This is just a sourdough baguette. I put everything bagel seasoning on the top. I also have a, a larger loaf, more like a, a French bread style. It's in the bread box right now. My wife likes to use it for French toast, but I, she won't use this for French toast, obviously. The everything bagel kind of determines its fate, and the fate is to be eaten and enjoyed with Italian food or just by, by themselves.
Pup, where are you? Cooking is done for this evening, and it's only 9.30 p.m. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, everything went well. Uh, the induction cooktop, I, I think it performed the way it was supposed to. It had that shut off before I was done using it, but I think it was designed to do that. I will read the book and verify that for sure. Uh, I still need to do cleanup of the cookware just to make sure that it is as easy as they say. The paper towel holder worked admirably. Good job, sea turtle. <laughs> uh, these crocs I think are really nice. I just wish I had more of them. They come in a set of two, so you may want to order more than one set. What else? Uh, I enjoyed the, the uh, silicone utensils. Those worked well. I didn't use all of the cookware. The, the, the uh, smaller, smallest pot I didn't use. I think I used everything else. I did. So um, as far as I can tell, I still I have to look at the loose handle on that one pot. Um, I'll have to have an addendum to this video, but I really want to try this. So I'm going to give it a little nibble. Going to try to get a piece with everything in it. I have sauce, pasta, cheese, and sausage. Honestly, I would have to try it compared next to the winery to know for sure what I preferred. I may, at this point, this, I mean, this is really good. I, I have no trouble eating this or the rest of that batch. But I think it needs to melt a little bit more in the oven. But since I will be Reheating the rest of the stuff, it's probably best to leave it a little undercooked before putting it away. So I think this has been a successful experiment. I am definitely satisfied with the results. But I'm just saying that I think it'll be even better with the leftovers, the planned overs. So uh, I'll be right back with uh, little closing notes, but... Um, I'm going to finish eating, so see you in a bit. I'm back with a retrospective. I read the manual for the new way. Okay, I didn't read the entire manual. <laughs> I read uh, selections from the manual of the new wave pick flex and found out that the one hour shutoff is a default. You can set that to whatever you like. Uh, it's kind of kind of works like a microwave. You set the time, you set the temperature, and uh, away it goes. One thing that I didn't do with that, that I will definitely be doing in the future, is using this for uh, hot oil frying. I don't know. I the one th I I don't have a deep fat fryer. I use cast iron, and I normally cook on the electric stove top. But with the with the new wave pick flex, I can set the desired temperature, which is something I could never do before, not with any level of accuracy. I just used a thermometer, uh, but I won't have to do that with this. That this this really will. I I don't deep fat fry that often, but this will make that process so much easier. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. And then with the GT cookware set, I had absolutely no problems cleaning that up. The pots just wiped clean so easily and I just used soap and water and it was, it was incredibly easy. And anything that looked like it might stick just didn't. It looks brand new when I'm done. I, I saw no scratches, which I didn't expect because I used the utensils that they provided. And, I, and nothing stuck to the bottom of, 
uh, especially I thought for sure there would be some kind of residue on the sauce pot, but there just wasn't. So that's a, I'm, I'm very happy to report that. But also with the utensils that they provided, it was silicone and wood, and they were both light colored. I I was I, I actually ended up putting those in the dishwasher. I didn't want to wash them by hand. I didn't. I figured if I washed them by hand, there's no chance I would get them as clean as they could be. And they came out completely clean in the dishwasher. Not a hint of red tinge on either of them. So that was great. Um, I don't think I have anything more to say. The uh, the let was it Latochi. The Latauchi soup bowls worked great. Uh, what, what I didn't expect anything to go wrong with that. I did use uh, what I guess one thing that I would comment on is that 28 ounces that is kind of subjective as to how many servings that is. I, I, there's no way I could finish 28 ounces of pasta. That was way too much for me, but it worked well uh, with that. I used that silicone lid and put the leftovers in the refrigerator and, and actually took it out of the refrigerator and put it directly into the microwave and reheated it with the lid on. And uh, it, that process performed flawlessly. I was very happy with that. Um, Pasta turned out great. The the uh, soup bowls, the Tauchi soup bowls were, uh, I loved them. And well, it, and there's there's a big difference between 28 ounces of soup, which you know, mostly water, <laughs> and 28 ounces of of pasta, which is mostly not. Um, I so 28 ounces of soup might be a, a might be no problem at all for one serving. It's just when it gets to be pasta, that, that could be a little much, um, but that's not the that's not the fault of the bowl by any means. And uh, if you want to split that uh, 28 ounces with uh, your spouse or loved one or friend, or just even do like I did and have it for next day for, for breakfast, <laughs> uh, that, that works great. The sea turtle paper towel holder, obviously it wasn't a serious test, but how do you seriously test a paper towel holder? At least this, in this case, it was a simple device. It had, uh, it either holds the paper towels or it doesn't. The turtle is purely decorative. It does not help you manage the paper towels that much. Uh, it certainly doesn't help you rip off a paper towel. In, in fact, it might interfere in that process, but that's not the point. The point is, it's a cute little sea turtle on your paper towel holder, and that's all I wanted from it, and that's what I got from it, so I was happy with that. The Niwer tripod worked great. I had absolutely zero problems with it. It is so sturdy. It's very adjustable, and once those adjustments are locked into place, it's not going anywhere. The one thing I said I didn't test earlier was the selfie stick function. And I think all that meant is that you fold the legs together like this and you use it as a selfie stick. And sure, why not? It's it's, it's versatile in that way. And I, I have never used a selfie stick in my life. I don't know that I ever will. But if I want to, I'm ready. <laughs> this is a... This is like I think it's the Cadillac of of tabletop tripods uh, this it's so sturdy this I have um, another tripod that I use for that's it's much taller I, th I think it's like six feet tall or whatever and I actually have another one that I use but neither one of those are anywhere near the quality of the Niwer here and I am very happy to have this in my collection uh, I will, I'm sure I'll replace the other ones. I'm not replacing this one. I, I can't imagine anything being better, but we'll see. I challenge you to make a better one, and then I'll, I'll try that one, and we'll use that instead. But for now, the Niwer is my go-to.
That's it. I have a lot of editing to do ahead of me, and I hope you enjoy whatever comes out of that process. I had a good time cooking my pasta, and I hope you had a decent time watching it. So uh, until next time, thanks for stopping by. Thank <laughs> you.